Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to talk about the inverse of trigonometry. We're going to take using trig to find our angles, OK? You're going to need a calculator and your foldable notes that we made and a pen and or pencil. All right, this should be the foldable that you have. We're going to be talking about inverse sine. We're going to use this as a shortener so we don't have to write inverse sine the whole time. We're going to use inverse cosine. And we're going to use inverse tangent. All right, let's get started. We're going to start with inverse sine. Now, when we do inverse sine, in order to find an angle measurement using sine, we're going to do the inverse of sine opposite over the hypotenuse. So if I want to find the measure of angle A, I'm going to set that equal to the inverse of sine. So you have to make sure you have that sine to the negative 1. It's going to be the opposite which is B, C over hypotenuse across from my right angle, A, B. Now I can do the same thing if I want to find the measure of angle B. To find the measure of angle B, I would do the inverse sine of the opposite, so A, C over the hypotenuse, A, B. All right, with those done, now we're going to come over here to our example. I have to find the measure of angle theta. So to find the measure of angle theta, I'm going to set that equal to the inverse sine of opposite, which is 12, over the hypotenuse, which is 17. Now, to do this, all I'm going to do is type the second part into my calculator. So the measure of angle theta types inverse sine of 12 over 17 into your calculator, and you're going to get like 44.9. We're going to round to the nearest whole number, so the nearest degree. So this one's going to be 45 degrees. So the measure of angle theta is 45 degrees. All right, moving on to inverse cosine. Now, if we're working with inverse cosine and we want to find a measure of an angle, we use the inverse cosine adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the measure of angle A is going to be equal to inverse cosine of adjacent. So that's the side that it's touching, but not the hypotenuse. So A, C over the hypotenuse across from my right angle. So that's A, B. Now if you wanted to find the measure of angle B, we're going to do the same thing. Inverse cosine. The adjacent, so the one on the side the angle is touching, so B, C over the hypotenuse across from my right angle, A, B. Now, if we're doing an example on this one, if I want to find angle theta, so the measure of angle theta equals, since I have the adjacent, the side is touching, oops, excuse me, the side is touching, and the hypotenuse, then I'm going to do inverse cosine of 32 over 35. So I'm going to type this in my calculator. So the measure of angle theta equals, and in my calculator I get about 23.9. We're going to round to the nearest whole number, nearest degree, so 24 degrees. All right, moving on to tangent. Here we go, inverse tangent. When we're working with inverse tangent to find measure of angles, we're doing opposite over adjacent. So it's just the inverse, and it's opposite over adjacent. So the measure of angle A is going to be the inverse tangent of opposite, so BC, over adjacent. The one that's touching, that's not the hypotenuse, so AC. Same thing for measure of angle B. So it's going to equal the inverse tangent of the opposite. So it's AC over the adjacent, the one it's touching. So BC. All right, let's move on to the example over here. If I want to find this angle measurement, the measure of angle theta, I'm going to do the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite is, so I'm going to have inverse tangent, that's really important, 
Opposite is 5 over the adjacent, which is 3. Type this in your calculator, the measure of angle theta. Remember, round to the nearest degree. And we're going to get 59 degrees. All right. I have two more examples for you, ladies and gentlemen. These two are don't need to be on your foldable. Just make sure that you're in your notes. If I say find the angle and all I give you is this, this is what we're going to do. We're going to find the angle by taking the inverse sine. Let's go for finding the measure of angle B. And we're going to take the inverse sine of whatever number they give us. So 0.4848, type that into our calculator. So the measure of angle B is going to be 29 degrees because we are rounding to the nearest degree. Do the same thing for cosine of A. So the measure of angle A equals the inverse cosine of 0.6157. Type that into our calculator and rounding to the nearest degree, 52 degrees. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for you today. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will be seeing you soon. Bye.